This one here, we moved. Can I cannot see these guys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, before we uh, start the formalities of the um, club meeting today, I would like to introduce to you um, the uh, members of the Rotaract Club of Makati, led by President uh, Nico de la Cruz, and they're going to make a short presentation on the activities and the achievements that their club has made during the course of this year. So I'm going to quickly uh, ask President um, Nico to come to the stage now, and then you say when you want to run the video. All right, so please come through. Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Press Michael and the Rotary Club of Makati. It is really a great honor to speak in front of the members of our sponsoring club, the Rotary Club of Makati. I am Nico de la Cruz, the incumbent club president of the Rotary Club of Makati, and it's, and it's very overwhelming to, spring it, to speak in front of you and to share our accomplishments, projects, community initiatives, and increasing our impact in the society as a youth leaders for the Rotary year 2022 to 2023. Rock Makati is a non-profit organization that helps young people to access marginalized communities, develop professional skills, and, and creating positive impact in the, in the community guided by the four-way test. Let us all witness the video presentation of our club for the Rotary year 2022 to 2023. His service are more important than ever. We stand united as a long leaders committed to making a difference. Today, we invite you on a journey to explore the incredible impact the club has had in our lives and the community's history. Through this presentation, we will bring you heartwarming stories of how Rotary has empowered us to create positive change develop lightning friendships and community leadership skills that will shape our futures from local communities to global collaborations. We will showcase the diverse project we have undertaken. We will use stone and game in our pursuit of a better way. We are the Rotara Club of Mahani, sponsored by the Rotary Club of Mahani. Guided by the timeless principles of Rotary's four way test, we have endeavored to uphold the highest standards of truth, fairness, goodwill, and beneficial outcomes. Throughout our journey, we have harnessed the collective power of diverse membership, bringing together young leaders from all walks of life to share a common vision to make a meaningful difference in the lives of others. From empowering underprivileged children to educational initiatives, providing essential resources to marginalized communities, we have embraced the challenges head on, igniting change with passion and purpose. The Rotary Club of Makati has a long standing tradition of excellence and a track record of accomplishments and awards that protect our enduring commitment to service. Over the years, our club has been recognized and celebrated for our exceptional achievements 
as buyers to participate comprehensive and awards. For an impressive fourth consecutive years, we have proudly received the five star club award with gold distinction, the highest excellent distinction presented at a district conference award, sir. With this consistent recognition on the sports of the club's determination, Dr. Wayne, the highest standard of service, and making this July in our of his recent participation in the Year Awards Night held on May 20, 2023 at the Real Report, resulted in several motivated awards for the Rotary Club of Mahat. Further, so I have a as a reminder for the we also extend our heartfelt congratulations to past president M.G. Nato for receiving the service award as an MBA in the office. This recognition showcases his exceptional leadership and a neighboring commitment to advancing the ideals of Rotary. These accomplishments and awards stand as a testament to the collective passion, dedication, and hard work of our members. We take immense pride in the impact we have made and the recognition we have received. And we remain committed to pushing the boundaries of service even further. At the Rotor of Love of Makati, we continuously strive to increase our impact by initiating transformative projects that address critical societal needs. One of our flagship initiatives, the Escuela of Life series, has successfully brought English reading and writing tutorial programs to the struggling readers for five consecutive years. Recognizing the importance of literacy in empowering individuals and communities, we have collaborated with various organizations. The project that we moves across the student program is to donate essential materials in the week's Through fund raising activities, we have ensured the sustainability of the project, enabling us to extend our reach and touch more lives. What sets the Escuela of Series apart is the dedication and expertise of our members. We are proud to highlight that all the new materials used in the program were crafted by our master's professional teachers, ensuring high quality and able educational experiences for our participants. The impact of the Spell of Life has transcended geographical boundaries, reaching multiple locations in the Pacific, given to the Malaysia, Panga, and Parangyan. However, our aspiration to the end is setting an ambitious goal to reach more provinces in the country by the year 2030. We are steadfast in our commitment to expand our program's footprint and make a meaningful difference in the lives of even more individuals. Project meeting is we were the same. An impactful initiative undertaken by the Uttara Club of Makati to address the sensitive issue of sexual harassment among children. BPS and children's group that skillfully conveys the message of personal space, boundaries, and safety while tactfully addressing the underlying issue of abuse. Project BPS aims to empower colleges and children by spreading this crucial message as widely as possible. This nonprofit initiative was established by a passionate group of individuals who deeply care about children's formation and development. The project was launched in key locations starting at Super Inutilipa, Lanao del Norte, and Agua Pila. By strategically choosing neighbors' area to launch BTS, we aim to reach a wide range of communities. 
parts being available and with being able to address each of them with the tools they needed to address and prevent instances of abuse. How we do is to ensure that children everywhere have the knowledge and confidence to protect themselves and report any incidents of harassment by raising awareness and shaping crucial conversations. Project BDS strives to create a similar environment for children where their rights and personal boundaries are respected. Very little heads, clean hands, safe lives. A vibrant initiative led by the Rotara Club of Kentucky to promote the proper hygiene of all children in a fun and engaging manner. We believe that instilling good hygiene and practices at an early age is crucial in preventing the spread of disease and improving overall health. Through interactive and enjoyable activities, we teach children the importance of washing their hands properly. But our efforts to stop there. We understand that access to hygiene products is a significant challenge for many communities. To address these, we provide hygiene kits containing soaps to communities with limited access to such resources. By ensuring access to these essential items, we empower individuals to maintain proper hand hygiene regularly. Our ultimate goal is to aid in the reduction of diarrhea. Common illness often caused by poor hygiene practice. By promoting and teaching children the importance of hand washing, we contribute to improving community health and well-being. The Rotor Club of Mahati is proud to have shared with you a glimpse of our marketing initiatives and products. From creating passive and vast community to reforming press, expanding our reach to our social media presence, Enhancing participant engagement from the civic to students and boys, initiating projects to help children and promote hygiene. Our club remains dedicated to making a meaningful difference in the world. We are excited to continue our journey of service, guided by our passion, dedication, and a spirit of labor. To strive to expand our impact and reach to the greater heights. We call the extent of the support and funding to the requirements to share our vision and belief in the power of service. With your generous contributions, we can further amplify our efforts, reach more communities, and create lasting change. Together, we can transform lives, empower individuals, and build a brighter future for all. Join us. As we continue to embody the spirit of service of self. Together, let us inspire and uplift, leaving a lasting impact on the community's history. Once again, thank you for the support and the guidance of the Rotary Club of Makati. For the Rotary year 2022 to 2023, I would like also to mention and thank MIP Michael Escaler. Um, new Generation Director Julian Lim, and to all the past presidents of the RC Makati and to the RC Makati Secretariat, again, thank you and please join us to our initiatives in the coming years. Together, we should promote and create positive impact. Thank you, everyone. President Nico clearly made a difference um, in his... Um leading the Rotaract um, Club of Makati. And uh, thank you very much. I think there is going to be some more perhaps picture taking later, but now I would like us to move along with the uh, rest of the uh, format of the evening, uh, sorry, the afternoon. Um, first of all, I would like to invite um, President Michael to call the meeting to order. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the Rotary Club of Makati, I hereby call this meeting to order. Thank you. And now I would like to invite uh, Rotary and Leo de Leon to come and give the invocation. So I ask you please to stand.
Almighty Father, we gather in your presence and in prayer. We thank you for the gift of our precious life, our health, for forgiveness and healing, and for our Rotary friends. We are grateful for the wonderful world you have given us to enjoy and to use for your greater glory. Bless our speaker, Jerry Webb Muhi, and Dual Tech's mission to contribute to the common good by developing young people and training financially challenged scholars for gainful employment. Bless the work of our hands so that we may be helpful to humanity and act according to your holy will. All these we ask in the mighty name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Mark. Please, please remain standing for the national anthem. song. I expect a lot of singing, please. Can I just ask you, please, just to hold one moment while we say the four-way test. So, firstly, is it the truth? Secondly, is it fair to all concerned? Will it build, build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? 
Thank you. Please. Good job. Mm -hmm. May I just ask, are we doing the greetings or the guests first? Birthdays. Okay, so birthdays. Um, uh, Rotary Anns, we have uh, Paula Darit on the 14th tomorrow, and uh, Betsy Davis, the, um, the wife of our charter member, on the 14th tomorrow. And then wedding anniversaries, we have Johnny and Christina Ang on the 15th, and Andy and Joanne Manalak on the 18th. So congratulations to them. A small round of applause. Okay. And now I'd like to welcome our guest, particularly first of all, although he's going to be properly introduced a little later on, I'd like to welcome our guest speaker, uh, Jerry Webb Muha, Muhi, sorry. And um, so he's here with us, but we will introduce you formally later, but welcome. Thank you very much, sir. Um, uh, particularly our, our uh, dignitaries, I'd like to acknowledge the uh, presence of uh, PDG Tony Keeler and PDG Sid Garcia. And uh, guests of the club, I would like to acknowledge um, the person who you've just met um, and welcome from RC, RAC McCarty, Rotary Act Club of McCarty, present, President uh, Nico de la Cruz. Please stand again. Treasurer Princess Paul. And then uh, Michi Perello from Kadakiriera. <laughs> Have I got that right? And Apple Garcia from Kadakaria. Paz Fernandez from MFI. Welcome. Bridget Eisen C. Zapanta from MFI. John Paul Cabata from MFI. Welcome again, all of you guys. Um, PP Johnny Ramshad from RC Lucena South, who's online. Uh, Jana, oh, please stand, please. Jana Tambuting, who's here with her dad. Please stand up. Uh, Aman Joseph Katanga, um, a, a guest of um, Rotary and Porsche. Philip Valde Candas. I'm sorry, I don't um, follow the handwriting here. Philip, anyway, welcome. And uh, Leo Calderon. Welcome. Have I missed anybody? Okay. So, so now what we would like to do is to um, introduce um, the pres, um, the graduates, or the graduate of um, our Heal program, and I would like to invite um, the person whose name I've just introduced. Mr. J.P. Uh, Cabalza to come to the stage to um, introduce um, the, um, the the graduates. Thank you. Thank you very much for the warm welcome. Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before I introduce our uh, K to twelve uh, graduate. Uh, Ms. Bridget Allison Zapanta. In behalf of Multinational Foundation, uh, we would like to thank the Rotary Club of Makati for supporting our scholars through the years. And it has been a very beneficial uh, aspect, especially when uh, Mr. Dotaro and Ms. Ria offered us the Villa Paraiso uh, School which we now use as our tutorial site for the um, for our 34 learners. A multinational Foundation has uh, 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 ventured into uh, several 
uh, aspects in terms of uh, supporting the underprivileged sector of society. We have uh, supported uh, those who have uh, priestly vocations, the uh, uh, differently abled, no? so yung mga may hearing impairment, visual impairments. So we try to support them, including the indigenous people and uh, those who are also inclined with mathematics and sciences. And the last part would be our home education and livelihood program, which in partnership with the Rotary Club of Makati, uh, Rotary Club of Makati have, has uh, 10 scholars with us. And uh, one of them graduated last uh, May 26. So basically, uh, the uh, program is ongoing. It's a module through the Sabo College of Malabon that we use. It's uh, accredited by the Department of Education. We are likewise supported by the city government of Paranaque uh, in, uh, uh, as part of the partnership and Our Lady of Peace Parish. So these two venues that we have, Villa Paraiso and Our Lady of Peace Parish, we try to motivate the out-of-school youth to come back to school. So Teacher Pass, who is also here, uh, she heads the program. And we have 34 total learners in that program. So in behalf of uh, the HEAL program, kami po'y malugod na nagpapasalamat sa Rotary Club of Makati. At talaga pong napakalaking tulong yung binibigay ninyo sa mga bata. Lalong-lalo na po dun sa mga talagang hindi nila kaya mag-aral, magpa-aral ng mga anak. Maraming salamat po. And uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Bridget. Alison Zapanta, our K-12 graduate. She just graduated last May 26 at Cebu Camp. A pleasant afternoon to everyone. I am Bridget Alison C. Zapanta, a recipient of a scholarship grant through the partnership Rotary Club of Makati Incorporation and Multinational Foundation Incorporation, which led me to complete my secondary education at Cebu College just last month. I have been with the HIL, stands for Home Education and Liv Livelihood Program for four years and throughout these years. There were challenges and trials that I encountered in my journey in life. I had experienced the continuous struggles in order to cope up with my journey studies, especially during my initial years since it was a transition period, wherein major adjustments have to be made from being a public school student to a private school learner. Although it was hard at first, but then I realized that it was during these years that I had been molded into an individual who became a better person. Coming from a below average family, my three siblings and I would often hear my parents argue with financial matters, like where would our next meal come from? How are we going to pay the rent, the utilities, etc.? My mother is a plain housewife and my father is a factory worker. Being the eldest among the children, this bothers me a lot, so I would often be grabbed the opportunity whenever there are work offers that comes along, like being a part-time receptionist or tutoring the other lower level learners to earn extra income, which I would then share in the household expenses. Balancing my studies and part-time work soon became manageable for me, for it was also at this point, where I came to realize the value of patience, perseverance, discipline, and definitely hard work. Today, as I start a new chapter in my life, there are still many uncertainties that I feel I still would be facing. I hope that I would be able to pursue my college education by obtaining a college scholarship grant so that I would be able to fulfill my dreams and ambitions in life. And I definitely, in your future, I would be able to help my parents and siblings. To my Rotary family, I wish to express my sincere thanks 
and gratitude for the opportunity you have given to me. Through your generous support in the educational field, may continue to transform lives and build a better future for learners like us that we could also be productive and successful members of our society. Thank you very much, Rotary Club of Makati, and more power. I'd like to have a very quick picture. Would you like to join? I think it's easier to go at the front here. So many congratulations to Bridget and um, ask you to smile nicely with our president and um, president elect. Thank you. Um, thank you. So, okay. So we now we now have the president on his feet. So perhaps you're ready for president's time. Would you like would you like your notes? Good afternoon to everyone and thank you again for coming to our lunch meeting. I'm very uh, inspired to see our rotor acts because they are really they inspire me to uh, that we you know we in the Rotary Club of Makati are building for a better future for the Philippines, right? I am also always inspired to see our past district governor Sid, past district governor Tony Kila, and many past presidents and future presidents. Uh, thank you to all of us who joined the feeding program held in Mebunga Pasig on June 5. It was a remarkable event with 60 children benefiting from our supplemental feeding program in partnership with Kabisig ng Kalahi. Allow me to share the RC Makati video news on the project. Ron? Rotary Club of Makati, in collaboration with Kabisig ng Kalahi, Caritas Pasig, and San Antonio Abad Parish, embarked on a meaningful journey to combat child malnutrition through a supplemental feeding program in Maybunga, Pasig. On June 5, the Rotary Club of Makati, along with its esteemed partners, launched a program to benefit 60 undernourished children between the ages of 3 and 6 years old. During the event, Messages of hope and encouragement were delivered by President Michael Escaler. I am very happy because lahat ng mga Rotary Club at saka yung na namamahay sa amin, mga asawa namin nandito in full force, yeah, sila at ang boss namin sa totoo. At sila ang nagmamahal kasama namin sa inyo lahat. Past President Freddy Borromeo, Committee Chair for the Nutrition Program. Nagsisilbi pa rin para makapagtulong kami sa pag-unlad ng kalusugan ng mga bata. President-elect Bing Matoto. Ito, na makakatulong pa kami in the future, no? uh, na hindi lang itong pang-isahan. PND Eddie Galvez. Mga nanay po, uh, huwag niyo pong kalimutan pang nalagaan ang kalusugan at kagalingan ng inyong mga anak. DG Andy Reggie Nomido. At... Yan po ang tunay na magulang. Ang iniisip natin, yung anak natin, una sa lahat. Ang notaryan boy, Arteche. May kasabihan that the future of our nation is on the A memorandum of agreement was signed 
solidifying the commitment of the Rooter Club of Makati and its partners to the success of this endeavor. To ensure that every child receives proper nourishment, a carefully planned 28-day cycle menu, conceptualized by Kabisig ng Kalahi, was implemented. Each child was provided with a hot meal and a glass of milk for five days a week over a span of 120 days. The program's impact can be seen through the smiles and laughter of the children as they enjoy nutritious meals and engage in activities that promote their overall well-being. The Rotary Club of Makati, together with its dedicated members and compassionate partners, continues to make a difference in the lives of undernourished children. Through initiatives like the Supplemental Feeding Program, they strive to create a healthier and brighter future for our community. I want to extend a special thank you to the dynamic duo P.P. Freddy and Giorgio Borromeo for graciously hosting lunch at the Valle Verde Country Club. Furthermore, I'm grateful for their unwavering support throughout the year in sustaining our feeding program. Their commitment is really very inspiring to all of us. They've been doing this for the last 10 years, maybe. Last week, we also convened the annual members meeting for our foundation. And I would like to take this opportunity and express my gratitude to Chair Louis Aceoche and the Board of Trustees. Your guidance and leadership have steered our foundation towards greater heights, enriching our projects and enabling us to support various humanitarian projects. I also wish to extend my congratulations to the new, new trustees who will be serving us next year. With your dedication and support, I am confident that our foundation will continue to flourish under your capable hands. Our disaster response committee is once again on red alert with the situation in Albay Bicol brought by the er eruption of Mount Mayon. Special thank you to Director Boom Villatuya and Chris Ferreresa for unwavering dedication in monitoring the situation and responding promptly to the needs of our affected families by the Mayon eruption. The club, in recognition of RC Metro Manila, Metro Sorsogon, will be providing hygiene kits mats and blankets to almost 1,000 families in Albay this week. Lastly, this is the final reminder for everyone for the upcoming Club Awards on June 19. We have a lot to be grateful for. This will be held at the Kamagong Room at the Manila Golf Club. This event will serve as a moment to reflect on the accomplishments which we have all achieved and recognize those individuals who have made significant contributions. I sincerely hope that you and your aunts will be able to attend this celebration as it promises to be a memorable occasion. Thank you once again for the unwavering support and dedication. I look forward to seeing you on Monday as we come together to celebrate and enjoy each other's company. Let's make this a memorable moment. Thank you very much. I can add um, just some comments regarding the installation dinner, which uh, President Michael mentioned regarding the 7th of July. 
It is only fantastic when we have fantastic dancers. And just to remind people who wish to be part of the dancing, um, there is dance practice the, uh, this evening at six o'clock in the clubhouse. And I understand that uh, President uh, nominee uh, Eddie Galvez is going to be there. So it means that everybody else should be there as well. Um, wrong bit of paper. Um, I, I would like uh, just, just to acknowledge um, uh, two of uh, Michael's um, MIPs have uh, uh, came came uh, just a few moments ago. Uh, so they are John John uh, Sulreta from RC Las Piñas Camido Ria. <laughs> And MIP Ronnie Benleke, Benleke, Benike, sorry, from RC Guadalupe Nuevo, nearer to home. I hope we're. I I think we should give you um, two minutes to, to two minutes to eat your lunch, and then uh, we I will invite the. Um, uh, the speaker to be introduced. So two minutes to eat the lunch, and then we'll, we'll start with the speaker.
Okay, I hope everybody's had a chance to um, finish up their main course at least before the dessert and coffees arrive. I'd now like to invite President-elect Bing Mototo to come and introduce our speaker for the day. President-elect. Thank you very much, Keith. Uh, good afternoon, uh, fellow members and guests. Um, this afternoon, we have a guest speaker who's actually going to put or show us how they've actually put into action what they've been always talking about, which is to create hope in the world. Um, and uh, our objective really, I mean, uh, my own thought was that uh, by having somebody like uh, our guest speaker here, he could illustrate, demonstrate to all of us here how we could really follow through on what we have been all talking about and espousing because he does it day to day. Uh, our guest speaker actually graduated as an engineer from the University of Santo Tomas. And then he took up his um, MBA in uh, a school along Taft. Not to show what the name of that school is. He went to La Salle. As you can see that most of the people here are Blue Eagles. Huh? Uh, but uh, our guest speaker actually has worked with uh, very large organizations after uh, his university studies, he went and joined the Ayala group of companies where I believe he stayed for about 10 years, basically with the Ayala Property Management Corporation, doing a lot of operational work. After that, he moved on to another group, the uh, Rusans group. And then by 2016, I think it was, uh, maybe it was even early, 2016, right? When he was, uh, I guess his conscience or his spirituality sort of surfaced and he moved on to an organization that wasn't quite paying quite as well as I'm sure as Ayala or the Rustans group. But here he is. He's um, more than made up for whatever uh, compensation that he may have missed out uh, in joining a for-profit organization by, you know, uh, enriching his own spirituality and, uh, you know, with without uh, trying to anticipate what he's going to talk about. To be honest, my own desire, uh, I was the one who invited uh, Jerry, 
I'm hoping that after this session that we would be all enlightened to see how we could support his organization's activities by trying to uh, provide scholarships to uh, the underprivileged who are being given a chance actually to uh, not just get dole outs, but to have a respectable living and livelihood for themselves so they can go on in life and help other people. So with that, I'd like to now request Jerry, if he's done with lunch, uh, please, let's welcome Mr. Jerry Webb Bui. Good afternoon. I'm so happy that uh, I'm here with uh, these fine gentlemen and ladies of Rotary Club uh, Makati. And uh, I was talking earlier with uh, uh, President uh, Mike. Seeing a handful of you here spending time on top of your busy schedule is already so much. So I think with that, everyone deserves to have a round of applause. So give me a couple of uh, mini, maybe some minutes to be able to show you a video of uh, what we're doing in Dual Tech. Isa sa atin, may mga bitbit na pangarap sa buhay. Daladala natin ang mga pangarap na ito saan man tayo dalhin ng pagkakataon. Pangarap ko po ay maging isang engineer. Yung pangarap ko ay umasinso talaga at saka matulungan ko yung mama ko. Nangarap ako na makapag-aral sa mga university. Yung gusto kong course na ano eh, aircraft technician. Although wala kaming pera, papunta talaga ako sa pagtigil sa school. Iba-iba tayo ng pinapasa ng bigat. Iba-iba ng mga hirap na kinakaya. Ang paghihirap ko po na pinagdadaanan ay eh, tungkol po sa kulang sa pinansyal. Sa ano lang kami eh, probinsya lang kami nakatira. Tatrabaho din po ako doon bilang isang bagger. Kaso napag-isip-isip ko din sa sarili ko nga nakakabuhay lang siya sa sarili mo lang. Hindi ako makatulong sa mama ko at tina din sa kapatid ko. At maraming kabataan sa ating bansa ang mag-isang hinaharap ang mga pagsubok na ito. Labing pitong taong gulang pa lang po ako, pero marami na po akong karanasan na napatibay na po sa amin. Ang ama ko po ay namatay nung ako po ay anim na taong gulang pa lang. Kabataan na hindi basta-basta sumusuko. Dahil niniwala sila na laging may pag-asa na may darating balang araw upang maging katuwang nila sa pag-abot ng mga pangarap. Interesado talaga akong mag-aral talaga. Naniniwala kasi ako na yun na po yung pinakahuli kong pag-asa na matiangat po yung sarili. Go lang tayo ng go. Magsikap na ito pa rin ang pangarap mo. Ito rin ang pangarap ng Dual Tech Training Center. Ang maging kaagapay ng mga kabataang lalaki na nagsisikap sa buhay. Nalawan ko po yung Dual Tech noong... Nagkatrabaho po ako bilang security guard. Pumunta po ako sa municipio para mag-apply ng scholarship. So nagustuhan ko ang offer ng Dual Tech kasi electromechanics. Pumunta ako, nagpaalam ako sa kuya ko. Sinayagan naman ako. Sa loob ng mahigit tatlong dekada, patuloy na tumutulong ang Dual Tech sa pamamagitan ng pagbibigay ng technical vocational training na naghahanda sa mga kabataan upang madaling makaharap ng trabaho. The school started in 1982. And uh, it was really the brainchild of several businessmen who wanted to do something for the less fortunate. So now they came up with a project and they named it to Water Training. The core program really is a bundle of three different trades. You have electrical, mechanical, and electronics. Sa personal character naman po, marami akong nabago dahil sa mga programa ng Dual Tech na may mentoring. Yung kaalaman na nakita ko at naipamahagi ng Dual Tech sa akin, ay napakarami na po, kahit tatlong linggo pa lang po ako dito. What's unique with our boys, practically they can do all things. 
sa tulong ng mga kapartner nila na kumpanya, tinitiyak nila na ang bawat isa sa mga nagsisipagtapos ay may sapat na skills at kaalaman na kinakailangan sa industriya. We have more than 100 partner companies and most of them, especially when they would visit the school, they would always say that it's the character of these boys that uh, made a deep impression on them. The partnership is started 20 years ago. Uh, we have uh, hired already a lot of OJT who has been exposed to our manufacturing operation. Pag sila yung na-absorb na sa manufacturing plant, parang wala nang adjustments kang ginagawa kasi they've been exposed to that for about 18 months. Yun yung uh, kagandahan ng partnership namin with Dual Tech. Dahil nga sa pangangailangan namin sa iba't ibang mga courses like electromechanical, napaka-importante na nagtitraining pa lang sila, nasisimula na namin sa kanilang exposure in actual conditions sapagkat kung talagang magaling sila at nagugustuhan namin sila pagkatapos ng training nila, hindi malayo that we employ them to be regular employees of Enchanted Kingdom. Most of the companies are very uh, happy with the performance of the uh, graduates. They really like the uh, working attitude of the students, the reason why they really uh, uh, want uh, to uh, higher dual tech uh, graduates. Yung formation na binibigay ng dual tech ay hindi lang sa kanilang chosen field but also sa pansarili nila. The way they train the OGT trainees, they impart the moral values. That's the reason why uh, we choose the dual tech. No? Marami na silang nabuong mga kwento ng tagumpay at marami pang bubuing mga kwento ng pangarap. Mas maganda yung buhay ko ngayon kaysa sa noon. Before, ano lang kami, nagre-rent lang kami ng bahay. Pero proud to say na ngayon, may sarili na akong bahay. Nakakapag-aral yung mga anak ko. Nakagraduate ako ng dual tech. Ito rin yung nagbigay sa akin ng oportunidad para makapag-ibang bansa. At magkaroon ng malawak na network sa industry. Sa ngayon po, ako ay nagtatrabaho sa isang semiconductor company. Noong araw, nagbibigil lang ako sa akin. Nandar sa dual tech, Naging entrepreneur ako. Tulong-tulong dito yung mga picture, mga trailer na para mahubog yung isang bata dito. Dahil sa bawat dasal, sa bawat pagsisikap, walang hindi kinakaya. At habang may mga institusyong tulad ng dual tech, hindi ka na mag-iisa sa pagbuo ng sarili mong kwento ng tagumpay. Gusto ko lang sabi sa, no, sa mga kabataan na gusto pang mangarap. Pag meron ng opportunity nga dadating, huwag na huwag na po talaga nila yung bibitawan. Lahat ng mga struggle na dumating sa inyong buhay, gusto ko pong ibaliwalan yan. Lahat ng mga pinagdadaanan mong hirap, i-offer mo lang sa Diyos. Ang masasabi ko lang sa mga kabataan katulad ko na nagtatry lang ko lagi sa pag-aaral, nagsisikap, think positive. So, wala naman yung posible. So you can see in the video, quite a handful of students that we have in the program. And uh, you know that uh, a good number of them were helped by different individuals, companies, and foundations. Well, when we started with, uh, with, with this uh, material that we are going to present with you, we say that it's like, you investing in character and skills and be a builder of society. So how did we coin about such? You know, whenever we go on a roadshow, next slide, please. So whenever we go on a roadshow on different provinces, we would see a big gap. And what is that? Us in Dual Tech, we get to have a chance of meeting different companies. Maybe some of you here, or almost all of you, maybe would have your own respective firms, right? So most probably, each one of you here would say, I need competent and qualified employees, workers. So it seems as if it's very hard these days to find the right talent for your respective companies. However, when we go on those provinces, you get to see the youth and they would say, please, can you help us? You know, there are some stories like, if for example, there is seven of them, seven of them in a family, 
they would eat alternately. So we need to say, maybe on Monday or the breakfast on Monday, the father will be the one to eat. For lunch, it will now be the turn of the mother. For dinner, it will now be the turn of the eldest and so forth. So just imagine before the next fellow would be able to eat or the me next member of the family would be able to eat again. It would take seven meals, right? So for them to be able to eat again. And you, we would be hearing stories. Uh, it's okay for us to join those bad elements. Ooh, why are you doing that? Because if we join them, we have sueldo, no? we have salary, and we have guns. So it seems that's the best of both worlds for them. They have the money and they have the gun. So but what will happen now to the society if that will continue? So that's why those reasons brought us here before you to be able to more or less show you, you know, that panorama that we have there in our countryside. What we have here, uh, it shows in the background, uh, Brian Domalanta. He's from one of those provinces up north in Cagayan. So he's one of those boys now doing his on-the-job training in one of our partner companies. But if we are going to ask him what was he doing while he was in Cagayan, all sorts of difficult tasks. Nothing wrong with that, but it will not be enough for him to support the family. We're not even talking of his own family, but his immediate family, his siblings, his parents. Because of that, us in Dual Tech, you know, we, we thought of something, hey, what we can do to be able to make them, you know, the youth, productive in the fastest way. And for us, maybe it's our bias because we belong to this organization, we would say it's through education. Next slide, please. So more specifically, we would propose that it can be a dual tech approach. Okay? So what's quite unique with our program is that the program is only two years. And in the process, six months, we give them the fundamentals of mechanical, electrical, and electronics. And then on the next 18 months, which is the second half of our training program, each student will have to render on-the-job training with any of our partner companies. So somehow with that, we get to see that uh, the trainees or the students that we are producing would have the venue to be able to learn actual work condition. The requirements of each and every companies are molded in that particular boy. So we can say, in as much as we go heavy on the technical education, we would also go heavy on the human formation, which whenever we pull in our cooperating companies, that's what they would say. Very important, aside from the technical skills, is the right human formation the character of each employees that we are getting. Now for them, it's very critical. Some would say they may be the best technically, but if they are absent, where's the productivity? They can be the most equipped technician, but if they do shortcuts with the operations, that's nothing. So that's essentially the program of Dual Tech. We, we say the Dual Tech approach. And we're so lucky to have adapted that from Germany, you know, that dual training approach. Now, what's the social impact of the program? Next slide, please. So whenever we get 
to help one of these students of Dual Tech, we get to see that they, the students, are being linked with the different companies. And somehow, we get to bridge the earlier gap I mentioned, wherein industries find it hard to get qualified employees and being able to somehow source it out from those different provinces. It's also a way of us being able to break the cycle of poverty. You know, we have heard stories whenever we go to these poor provinces. If they could not continue, if they could not continue studying, the next option for them is to have their own family. Nothing wrong with that. Very good to have your own family. But if you, how can you now support your own family if you don't have that training or that somehow livelihood? That will be very difficult. And that will continue. Just imagine if they don't have, they're not productive, they have their own family, they're tired to have children, that's it. Another cycle of what we call poverty. Now, with our program also, we produce the type of employees or students that will be adapting to your requirements. When I mentioned earlier that these boys go on OJT towards the second half of the program, we, meaning the school and dual tech, uh, the companies, goes hand in hand informing whatever type of employees you want to come out from them. For example, if we partner with someone who is into car manufacturing, so we have given them the chassis, but as to what engine, what to what body will be placed on that chassis will now be a partnership between the company and Dual Tech. And as we do that, we also make sure that continuously we provide them human formation. Because as they go along, they have to be still molded. On, on top of the technical skills, the character will have to be also tempered in such a way that they can be responsible employees for these companies. Next slide, please. As we go on to the what we call now the next normal, maybe we would say there is so much requirement for AI these days, artificial intelligence across industries. All right. Now, our program, some would say, might be affected by that. But thinking hard about it, it's really more of us being still able to complement artificial intelligence. And still, we will have to continue doing heavy, going heavy on work values and technical formation. So because of this, next slide, please. We came up with a plan for what we call the next normal. We started to realize that these days, there has been a growing demand for technical people. And those graduates of ours, even those within the vicinity of dual tech, the employees, the professionals, are seeking professional accompaniment. So because of that, we would be having two new buildings for the school. No? And maybe some of you would say, oh, that's too much. No? But then again, the way we look at it, no, there are some who would go to us and give 500 pesos every month. But that fellow doesn't stop, hasn't stopped for the last 10 years. So maybe some of, some of them will be able to give upfront by the millions. Do we accept them? Yes, no problem with that. But just imagine its tremendous impact on the society. As we continue, because now more and more of these employees, professionals, are wanting to have 
a certain venue no? where they can exchange ideas like this venue where you can have maybe an exchange of ideas amongst yourselves. That happens also with dual tech. So that's why for us to be ready with the requirements, we are also venturing into this. More companies are looking at, they're asking, can you help us with some certification process aside from what you have in dual tech, that of being able to provide technical training? Of course, we can do that. Can you help us maybe do some research for our companies? We can do that. But then again, we would want to have a separate venue for that so that schooling can continue while at the same time attending to the needs of different companies. Next slide, please. Now maybe some of us are, are asking, oh, what, what would be our role? No? Well, sometimes it's, it, we would easily say, maybe easily I'll do it by having financial contribution. Okay. Pero there are other avenues. For some companies, they partner with Dual Tech. So their company can host some of our students for their on-the-job training. Okay? So some of these companies, what they do, they just refer the school to a community where they think we can get students. That's already, that's already huge for us. Because right now, as we speak, we have maybe around 300 to 400 students backlog, meaning requirements from different companies. A week ago, we were talking with a company and they're looking for thousands, thousands of students. So how can we just, we, definitely we won't be able to give it to them because we're working with 100 cooperating companies, but a single company looking for a thousand. Another company looking for 50, but that's 50 every month, maybe for the next two to three years. That's how confident they are with our program. However, however, we should be able to find the right formula on being able to source those students from different provinces and maybe you and me pitching to be able to support maybe one student, two students. Because the concern is for these students, they don't really have the resources. You go to their place. You look at the definition of a house where they're staying, it will never qualify because that's different. The way we define a house is different from where they're staying. And all we have to do is just to enable them with whatever way we can be of help. Last time we were able to visit a community, they produce a lot of agricultural products. When they saw us, they were literally begging, Sir, can you please help us where we can sell these products? Because they don't have the market. They don't have the access. And yet, what will happen to those agricultural products? They have already harvested it. It will rot. So, I'm saying this because... Maybe some of you would have a glimpse of that. But us, whenever we go to different communities, we get to realize how, how badly this community needs help. So next slide, please. But going over some things, we found out that in this little way, we also contribute to the achievement of the United Nations SDG, that of being able to provide quality education and decent work and economic growth. Whenever we help a student of dual tech, we're talking of helping a family, not just the individual, but the whole family. So what's next now for, for you and me? Next slide, please. 
So we say we invest in character and skills. So how is it? Maybe by encouraging investments in technical education. As I mentioned earlier, not necessarily just giving the financial aid, but just opening our companies for OJT programs. Or also, we go heavy supporting character development programs. It's one way of being able to say that we are investing in character and skills. Maybe we can ask ourselves in our company, when was the last time that we organized something that will improve the culture of the company? Or maybe the, what we say, the attitude of our workers. Some companies saying they are losing by the millions simply because most of their workers don't have the right work attitude. So another thing that we can do is for us to be a builder of society. Yes, of course, the old formula will still apply. We can provide scholarships and financial aid. So you can choose maybe amongst your employees, their sons whom they can send to dual tech, or maybe a community that the Rotary Makati adopt. We can do a roadshow, introduce a program of dual tech for them. And that's already a lot. So thank you very much. And uh, I'll be open to any questions or clarifications about the presentation. Good afternoon again. So thank you very much, Mr. Mohi. And as you mentioned, he will be available now for a few questions. So please, I think um, first on his feet, if he says so. Thank you, Mr. Mohi. May I know how you select your students? Well, the process of selecting our students, we they, they will have to take the examinations also, and they will have to complete their senior high school. However, there are still some students who are, uh, maybe we can say products of the old curriculum. They haven't completed their senior high school, so we also take them in. So interview and exam, they pass it, they are in the program. Can you put our company will be interested on your graduate? Electromechanical people uh, and IT. Yes, sir. You will be interested Thank you. on your graduate. Thank you, sir. Yes. Correct. Thank you, Henry, for the talk, yeah, Jerry. Um, look, I, I wanted to ask you about uh, the cost behind this. I mean, because I, 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 I maybe you know, maybe Joseph, he passed away, but he was supporting Dualtech, and he was trying to push for these programs in the Rotary Club of uh, Manila, mm -hmm. and he was telling me that he was he was needed sixty thousand per year per student. Is that right? Mm. Actually, that it has two components: the tuition participation, which is thirty thousand for the two years already, thirty thousand for the two years, and uh, another thirty-five thousand that will be used by the students for his personal expenses while he is ongoing with the in-campus training, because especially if they are coming from different provinces. They need to situate themselves just outside of the school, which is in Kanlubang, where they need to spend for the boarding house, food. Roughly, we would compute it at between 30 to 35,000 during the six months. So that's the total of the 60, 65. In 65, yes. actually. Yes. Now, my other question is you were mentioning that companies are requesting thousands of employees. And the capacity of the school is not that large. I know, I know the school. Uh, Lito Sandejas is a close. Ah, yes, yes, yes. And uh, and then I I went to the school, and uh, the facility is not that large. So how can you train more people if you want to, in, you know, attend the needs of these companies and asking for thousands? Mm. Well, praise is that 
we can always have two shifts. Meaning to say, we can have one shift of students in the morning and another shift in the afternoon. So more or less, that will enable us to have a students, a student count anytime in the day of 500. So if we look at 1,000, we will be able to host them. 500 in the morning and another 500 in the afternoon. And then since six months after that, they go to the cooperating companies. So somehow the school will still will be again ready to take in another 1,000 students. So far, that's the most that we can do. We have, we have the capacity of being able to double or even triple the student intake but we need to have to go heavy on investing with buildings already. That, that's good news. I, I, I thought that it was going to be a challenge, actually, with the existing customers. Yes. Anyway, thank you very much, Jeremy. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have a question for Mr. Mohino. Uh, are you named after the American songwriter and uh, country singer Jerry Webb? <laughs> no, I I was telling some of some of uh, the guys here. My dad thought that I'll be six footer, so my web comes from the famous basketball star in the sixties. I mean, Freddie Webb. Freddie Webb. <laughs> well, uh, my dad is a uh, well. Uh, Freddie Webb is our the, the client of my dad in the gasoline station. I see. So my dad committed to <laughs> yeah. Senator Freddie well, Webb. Well, anyway, in case you don't know, Jerry Webb is actually a very famous American yes. uh, country singer and songwriter <laughs> with exactly the same spelling as your name. Wow. <laughs> Jerry Webb. Anyway, uh, my other question, I want to inform you that uh, we sponsored three scholars to Dual Tech. And I'd like to thank uh, the two gentlemen here who actually contributed to the, the sponsorship. You know, because when my wife and I got married back in 2016, uh, PDG Sid Garcia and uh, Eddie Galvez, <laughs> who are not listening, <laughs> Uh, they, donated they donated to our uh, wedding, wedding fund. Wow. And then we used the wedding fund to uh, sponsor three scholars. Two of them graduated and the other one dropped out. Uh, the name of, uh, you might know them, uh, Mr. Danilo Antiola and uh, Mr. Christopher Hernandez. They graduated from Dual Tech. Wow. So anyway, I just like to let you know. Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. And by the way, you have helped two families. <laughs> yeah, and then well, my last question is: um, you mentioned that you know when you do the training, you you take care or you concentrate on the uh, technical vocational skill, and the other one is the character formation or spiritual formation. Yes. Now you said that companies are complaining that many of their employees. They might, they might have the have skill, skill, but they don't have the attitude. attitude. So, so does Dual, Dual Tech, Tech do, do something, something about, about these companies? companies? Can you actually retrain their existing employees who have this attitude problem? Very nice. A very nice question. Actually, we have formed a group who specifically would be able to cater for the needs of the companies and concentrating on the values work values. We started doing that with some of our cooperating companies because they, they, they see the importance of that. And uh, yes, just let us know if uh, some of the companies here would be interested. We, we are very much willing to sit down with you and look at the details on how we can do that. To that extent of having even coaches, if needed. Yes, sir. Thank you Thank for you. coming here. Uh, I, happen I happen to be a, to be a trustee, trustee also in a charitable foundation, and we were sponsoring 16 students in, in so Dual Tech. What, what foundation? Uh, Angelicum. 
ang jelly ko. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, sir. And, uh, my question is, is this. Uh, during the six months that the students are in-house, uh, yes, you're able to uh, have this character building. So how do you continue with it during the 18 months of on-the-job training? Oh, Do yes, they come back to the schools on weekends or something like that? Mm. So, sir, normally during the OJT team, Ah, okay. Yes, yes, please. They were experiencing a lot of uh, filtrage and theft uh, with their TV and Makban um, geothermal plants. Uh, so then they started to partner with Dual Tech. And you talked, you asked that question, you know, how do you um, keep this? Uh, values, uh, values formation, formation going, going right, right. Um, uh, we've, we've heard, heard about, about uh, uh, personally you know our company we've heard about 12 people interns from uh, dual tech we've also hired a service manager uh some uh, past graduates and they've turned out very well because dual tech um you know what i like about their interns and their graduates they're very hungry to acquire new skills they have their fire in their belly you know, because they, they need a job, you know, they're financially challenged, right? And I think most importantly, they have the values formation. Um, when our, my wife with Chevron, she's partnered with Dual Tech, it becomes infectious, you know, um, spiritual formula. Because every weekend, they have a get together. Uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about this, though, which reinforces their, their values, values formation. formation. Uh, uh, in my company, company um, um, I have I a have coffee, coffee a company, company and uh, that's, that's how I go. go we go back a long ways because he used to be in charge of facilities for Starbucks. Starbucks. Jerry, Jerry, before he went, he went to Dual Tech. Tech. So I have known him from Starbucks and also from Dual Tech. Tech. With, our With our company, company we have service technicians. So uh, assume you have a coffee shop in Caloacan, right? And your machine breaks down. And the uh, total cost of repair is 30,000 pesos, which includes the heating elements, maybe the pump, the solenoid pump. And then in Filipinos, I would say, 30,000 is And then I will tempt you. Can you go back to the end of 10,000 pesos in your pocket? You know, for a lot of Filipinos, that's very tempting. 10,000 pesos. I will have the part of the company. And I'll come back tonight after hours and you give me the 10,000 pesos. You are the owner of the coffee shop. You save 20,000, the employee gets 10,000. You do what the employee will say, I'm sorry, sir. That's against my principle. He will come back to the office and report that incident to us. We will give him an award. We might even, you know, uh, uh, San, I, I know Tony, remember we, we installed the machine in your place and you were insisting on giving him a tip, Ionia, but you were insistent. And you know what that guy did? 500 pesos, he reported it back to our office. I received 500 pesos from Mr. Tony Lopez. I didn't want to accept it, but he was very persistent. So, what are going to do 500 pesos? And we give him another 1,000 pesos. So, yung mga may sungay siya, sabi niya, wow, ganito pala to. You know, because these dual tech employees, they have these values formation every weekend. They have this uh, dual tech creed, which I'm not gonna ask Jerry to recite. No? But yung core values na is really embedded in their character. So, you can help them with uh, scholarships, number one, or number two, um, hiring their on-the-job trainees. Or even hiring their graduates, you know, for your management employees, your service technicians, your managers, supervisors. And that's how you can partner and help dual tech. Thank you. So if I may, uh, on top of what uh, Leo has cited, we also have some guys who are more or less unseen. So during the 18 months, they go and make sure that they still take care of these OJTs. So, how would that be? 
aside from organizing the weekly somehow mentoring sessions, if needed, we also do one-on-one -on -one with these students. So we have a pool of part-time mentors to help our industrial coordinator address the needs of our students while rendering their RJT in different companies. So to make sure that all the remaining months that they will be in the program, they are still properly attended to. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for supporting a good okay. number of students. Do we have time for, time for one more question? There it is. Uh, thank you very thank much, much, Jerry. Uh, uh, I wanted to uh, uh, inquire about your project, project Technology, Technology Center. Center. Um, and, I and I was wondering, wondering whether this, this could, could sort of jive with what, what we have actually going up right, right now in our in compound, compound where the clubhouse is. is. There's actually a, a, a structure going up. up. Uh, I think it's, it's what, what Tito was involved in it, Louis. Louis. Uh, it's, meant it's meant to be really a facility. A facility. I'm just sharing this with you. And I'm trying to see whether there's a way that we could cooperate. The structure is uh, supposed to be finished within the year. I'm not too sure if we have an actual program in place already that will be able to utilize that facility. Because one thing, we have a structure, but the second thing is what do we do with it? And the game plan, real, so I understood it, is really meant to be to provide and to promote uh, technology-related uh, activities. As a matter of fact, the club just recently completed what they call this Hatch Project, which is a program that attracted entries all over the country to be able to get ideas on technology. There were about 170 entries that came in. There were three chosen, and we're not at state to see, see how we how could we follow, follow through and raise the necessary things. Now, I'm bringing this up because I want to understand, you're putting up a facility, I'm not sure how much it's going to cost, but I would I would assume that perhaps Dual Tech already has the necessary software, so to speak, to be able to uh, take advantage of the facility. Otherwise, why would you be building it? I was wondering whether there is some way that we could have a cooperation with our club and not have you or dual tech see how you could consider optimizing the facility that we will be putting up soon so you may have some thoughts along that line jerry it may be something that we cannot obviously talk at length about now but if i may suggest going forward maybe it's a good idea for us to form some sort of a you know small committee coming from dual tech and coming from a rotary club we have incoming an incoming board with various uh, directors in charge of a lot of service activities just to sit down and explore how perhaps this could be put forward and that could be one of the considerations as well as having some sort of a an arrangement where perhaps uh, some of our members who are not all represented here this is a small percentage of our membership there may be other a lot more members who may have some needs for the kind of services that you're talking about. Maybe we can see how we could canvas survey the needs of our, of our members and see if we could sort of match it. And then finally, I guess the question that I'd like to clarify with, Dual Tech is a non-profit organization. So all the services that you're offering, presumably, maybe you can explain your, what your considerations are for offering these kind of services. Okay, thank you very much, Jerry. Thank you. Uh, we're very much open into looking at that uh, property, sir. I mean, maybe right now, uh, as we discuss things about dual deck now, definitely there will be or there are a company who might be calling the school, looking for possible partnership or looking at what we can somehow offer them. Or maybe another group who is visiting the school right now and looking at possibilities, whether to sponsor a student or to help in one way or another. So in, in that having a building uh, and possible collaboration with Rotary Club, Manila, uh, Makati, we, we, we can always explore that. And we're very happy with that. 
because that will I think that will enable us to reach out to more companies. Now, just to manage expectations, we are not experts in everything, but whatever we have, we can gladly offer those services with you. Yes, sir. Now, talking about Dual Tech as a non-profit organization. Yes, maybe if we have churned out a good somehow, I don't know how to properly call it, whether it's a surplus or whatever. No? How do we make use of that? If I say the company has a net of 1 billion in a year, is that big? Maybe people would say, yes. And Jerry, for a type of institution like yours, that can be scandalous. But if we look at the number of the youth, communities needing our help, that's nothing. We can come up with a program that one billion in a year completely gone. But not like a water going down the drain, but it's more of a water being used to make the seedling grow and produce more. That's how we look at it. So, yes, uh, Sir Bing, uh, yeah, we're, we're a nonprofit, but we really can help. We really can reach out to more if only we have all the combined, maybe not just resources, but I can say all the minds even of uh, the gentlemen and ladies inside this room. Thank you, sir. One, one very quick final. Okay, question. just a uh, yes, reaction sir. to PE Bing. Bing. Yes, yes uh, uh, of course, course, we're the building committee, we're constructing it, but when it's finished, it will be turned over to the foundation, officership, and of course, the, the club's presidency, which is now under yours. So you can actually Yes, sir. come up with an arrangement wherein they can use the facility yes, probably just pay for costs of electricity yes. maintenance mm -hmm. and uh, they can use it let's say once or twice a week for yes, their uh, training programs use it as a classroom mm -hmm. as a conference room that, so there that are actually three help. floors there available mm -hmm. the first floor which is the Hachinoba uh, creativity center can fit easily 30 people mm -hmm. the second floor will probably fit around 40 people and the third floor can fit a hundred people. Wow. So uh, it's up to you, really. And uh, of course, President Michael will be the chairman of the foundation, and you're the president of the club. You can enter into an agreement with them uh, in whatever way you will uh, conceive it to be. Now, the second reaction, well, it's really a question uh, or probably a suggestion that if you have some programs that you could share with us, and then, and then we can, we can get, get our company, company HR, HR to take a look at them. Yeah. Yes, sir. And if they're applicable, let's say, for a respective company, company, like let's say, company from Cesar, company from Tony, company from us. Yes, sir. Then we can actually commission you to tailor fit, you know, that particular program for our respect, you know, for our respective companies. No? Yes, sir. Values formation special. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. I, th I think. Um, we better, we better stop now. I think just one, one thing before we uh, ask the, the president to close. Um, I have um, seen on our uh, chat group that very sadly, Ophelia Sullivan, the mother of our member Philip Sullivan, uh, passed away this morning. So I would like you please to stand for just a, a few moments of silence to um, ac acknowledge and um, respect her. Okay, thank, thank you. Details will be passed around on our group chat. And meanwhile, um, I think it's best now that we ask President Michael to um, thank the speaker. Thank you, Jerry, for uh, your very inspiring career to enable the very, very many 
used to find opportunity in livelihood. Uh, we, the Rotary Club of Makati, will support you. Like uh, our past president said, we will provide uh, space for you in our uh, new building with the, with the help of our president, incoming president, uh, Bing. And we look forward to a partnership. I mean, all our companies need people who have integrity. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I was, going, was saying is that maybe if you can also develop nursing and marketing and sales, because there is really, really a strong demand for nurses all over the States and Europe, they will take as much as you can. And the moment they go abroad, their livelihood is insured, right? So if you can look into going into that training program too, I think that will uh, be of great help to our country. Thank you very much on behalf of uh, the Rotary Club of Makati. I want to give you a token of our appreciation. And I want to wait it while I observe the a German meeting from the other side. Yeah, you can join this one. So, now we're going to adjourn and then we're going to take photographs. With your permission, may I call this meeting adjourned? Thank you. Who's the budget? Monday, Monday, Monday. 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 Monday.